Finally, with this video, what we are planning to do is choose, pick all of the points that we talk to you guys and actually talk a little bit deeper on them because there is so much more that we have to share with you guys about these points, but we don't gonna be able to share in this video because if not, the video is gonna take us five hours, but we're gonna be sharing more specific details about each point that we share with you guys in this video. And it's very, very, very important information that you need to know before you actually move there. Hello, blessed people. My name is Christian. And I'm Nicole. And this is Chris and Nick YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and welcome back to our channel. And remember, we are blessed to be a blessing. Today, we're going to be giving you guys our top 10 reasons why you should never live in Puerto Rico. It is crazy. We really, really, really like Puerto Rico a lot. But we really also dislike Puerto Rico a lot. In many ways. Puerto Rico has a lot of things to improve, but a lot is a lot. We're going <laughs> to be giving you 10 reasons, but there are plenty of reasons why you should never live in Puerto Rico. But we're going to give you the top 10 that we have in our list. And... There are some things that are not in our list and I know it's in Nicole top <laughs> reasons why you should never live in Puerto Rico. But we're going to talk about that in different videos. Reason number one. Razón numero uno. Uno. Is the cost of living. Although if you look at the data or whatever online, like you Google it or whatever, you might think that it's actually cheap to live in Puerto Rico. But unless you have your own business or you have a work from home or whatever that you can actually transfer to go to Puerto Rico and you can still work and get paid the same amount of money, the cost of living in Puerto Rico is very expensive because actually the minimum wage in Puerto Rico is around $8.50. Like it's very difficult to find a job in Puerto Rico that pays you $14 an hour $13 an hour or, or higher, like in other states, you will usually find a job that will pay you $8.50 or $9. There are some places that are paying $11, but that is very rare to find, and most people are applying to those jobs. So it's very hard to find those jobs and get them. When you compare the how much money you make with the cost of living, it is very expensive, extremely expensive, to the point that right now, most of families there, most of the couples there that are trying to buy a home, they are not approved to get a home because what they get paid is not enough. So the banks right now are not even giving loans to people to get their property. So there is a big, big amount of people that are just living, renting because they cannot afford to buy a house. Another thing to keep in mind is that not only is the cost of your home pricey in comparison to what the livable wage is in reality, but the groceries and the gasoline prices are comparable to the states. And so we understand that there are plenty of states here that have similar um, minimum wage as well and the cost of living in homes, etc. But you just need to keep in mind that Puerto Rico is an island. It's not connected to the mainland. So things are way more pricier because of the fact that there are charges added for transportation costs overseas. And not only that, the quality of food that you're receiving is the bare minimum. It's not organic, it's not grass-fed, it's not the high quality nutrient-rich foods. It's literally the most basic mass-produced produce that you are receiving at high market price. Yeah, you, you have the opportunity to find some organics and some grass-fed produce but it's also, even if it's organic and all of that, it's not the same quality as how it is in the States. Mm -mm. It's sad, but it's the truth. And that leads us to point number two. The second reason as to why you should not move to Puerto Rico is because of the job opportunity. It is honestly super scarce. There is not many opportunities at all. And if there is, you have to speak Spanish and or have connections within that employer because they're not going to just receive any type of person. They are very selective and you definitely would need to have a higher education just because of that 
environment. And so we highly recommend, like we mentioned, have your own business, work from home, have something that's stable before you move to the mainland. And if you have children, make sure you are setting them up for success. And in the same topic of job opportunity, if you are a male, you have a lot less chances to get a job in Puerto Rico. Oh, yes. Which is very, very strange, very complicated. I don't know the reasons for it. <laughs> I'm very happy that they are giving opportunity to females. That's a really good thing. But I don't think they are doing it for the right reasons. It mm -hmm. seems almost like they just do it to attract more males to different places. Like yes. if you go to Home Depot. Oh my goodness, that's like ironic. Eight or seven people out of 10 are females working there. And it's okay if they're females and they know what they're doing, but a but, lot of time you ask them and they don't even know what you're talking about. Mm -mm. But the reason why they hire, I this is what we think. It definitely is the reason. There's it's no other way around it. There is usually males are the one doing the constructions in the house or commercial places and they have females there so they attract males to the place to go more often and spend more money and it's very sad i mean because that's not the reason why you should hire a female you should hire a female because she's effective and productive in her job but not because you just want to attract more people so just with that if you are a male um, it's going to be a little bit more complicated for you to find a job. And if you're a female, well, you make sure that you speak Spanish. Reason number three is the government. <laughs> the, <laughs> the government in Puerto Rico sucks, like big time. I know the government almost everywhere is horrible. Here in the States, it's a mess. Everywhere is a mess. But the government in Puerto Rico is a joke. Yes, while we were there, I'm just going to share this little yeah. insight. Just a few months in, I was seeing how horrible it is that I told my husband and his family that I plan to run for governor or mayor yeah. because of how stressful and disappointing it was to experience it. Just not only as a local for his family, but also as a foreigner who is going there, excited to move there, and then you're just introduced with something that's just not organized at all. The government is just very corrupted. Probably 98% of every person that is in the government, all the politicians are 100% corrupted. They are very bad. They are stealing the money that the United States send there for education. They are stealing the money for help. When there is a hurricane, they are stealing money left and right. They don't care for the people. They don't care for the island. They don't care to fix anything. They just run for a position just to get rich, get money. Greediness. Yeah, be comfortable and that's it. It's, it's sad, but the government in Puerto Rico is one of the worst government I ever seen. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very sad to say because I'm from Puerto Rico, but there is nothing good about the government in Puerto Rico right now that I can say. It makes me so sad just like talking about this, like it makes me wanna cry because the Puerto Rican community is so lovely, but obviously the government plays a huge role in your quality of life because you have to deal with things that are legal in your day to day as you live. So it also affects you to a certain extent. But the sad thing is also that, yeah, it's sad for the people, but the people are the one choosing them. <laughs> Like there are other options, but they always pick and choose the same people, the same two parties. And that's it. They just go with those two. Whoever is running, whatever they are offering, they just believe the lies and they always vote for the same people. And the results of that is what we see. The fourth reason as to why you should not move to Puerto Rico is because of how the government handles the taxpayers' money. This is obviously building on reason number three with the corruption. But for example, when you arrive to Puerto Rico, you are probably envisioning a luxurious tropical island, but you are not introduced with that at all. When we arrived, I was shocked. I had high, high expectations for Puerto Rico. I had in mind that it would look like Spain, because they were conquered by Spain and I was thinking, you know, it would be super nice, super luxe 
and just so beautiful and so much rich history there. But there isn't. There may be just in San Juan, but throughout the rest of the island, of course, there's other national um, places that you can visit that do have rich history. No doubt about that. But the communities, the plazas, the roads, the construction sites, everything is poorly managed and your taxpayer money is not being seen at all. You see even the schools are just old and run down. They are not updated, they are not modernized, they are not well maintained. And as you're driving from the airport to your destination, it's just not a pleasant sight. But definitely there are far worse places. Just don't have high expectations and don't compare it to because if you do and you have that set in your mind, you're not gonna be pleased at all and you'll regret right away moving to Puerto Rico. Yeah, you're gonna be seeing like the road is super messed up. Even San Juan that you would think because it's the capital of the island will be well maintained. It's not, it's actually a lot worse than a lot of other cities of the island. Graffiti is everywhere. All the buildings are have graffiti. They can be in use or they can be just abandoned buildings. The grass, super like tall in oh, yes. many areas. You have to be very careful when you're driving because there are holes in the road in like every whatever, every mile you're gonna find plenty of holes everywhere. Not just on the secondary roads, but also in the main roads and like highways. It's very messed up. They, they don't take care of the infrastructure of Puerto Rico at all. The lights, like the, the light poles in the road, you can see 20 of them and only one of them is working. It's very, very messed up, very poorly managed, to be honest with you guys. And those are things that can easily be fixed. So we're not being dramatic or exaggerating the situation. It is truly what you will also experience when you are living in Puerto Rico. So keep that in mind. And for reason number five, we have education. The education in Puerto Rico is the worst education in the whole nation. You think so? It is. But it's strange because there's a lot of college graduates. It doesn't matter. The, okay. The, from kindergarten all the way to high school, they are the worst in education in the nation. In math, in those like SAT or whatever mm -hmm. test, Puerto Rico was the last one on math oh, this really? past year. It's oh horrible. My gosh. Not just that, it's that there is kids that are already in eighth grade, ninth grade, and teachers, when they come to their grade, teachers are realizing that these students don't even know how to read. So it's like, it's horrible how the students are like careless because there are a lot of students that don't care at all. They just want to be artists. They just want to be a, a rapper or whatever. They don't care about school. But there's also a lot of teachers that are horrible. Like how you can pass a student that don't even know how to read just, mm -hmm. just because you don't want him in your class anymore. Then you quit. If you are a teacher and you don't want this student in your class that you're over him, let me just pass it. No, you quit then. You quit and then a teacher that is willing to teach the student the right way, he can take your place. But the teachers are doing a really bad job. There are teachers that are super good and they are really like, they really love what they do. They love to teach the student the right things. But there are others that don't care at all and they are just there to get paid, which is actually a very, very poor pay that they are getting, mm -hmm. very bad wage. But the education in Puerto Rico is one of the worst in the entire nation. And it, it is in every aspect, the buildings, the school, the, the, everything, the system is all broken. It's really bad. The schools are, mess, are all messed up. Students are needing to bring their own toilet paper to school really? because there is no even toilet paper in the bathrooms. Yeah, so there you go. The reason that we were talking about with taxpayer money, it's not going towards what they're saying. And one thing I want to just mention too, 
despite majority of the island possibly having you know really bad education but there are many new institutions being built on the island from expats and local native puerto ricans who are changing the atmosphere of education so don't look at it like you have no hope for your children just because you are planning a move to puerto rico definitely look into it because there is a greener pasture on the other side. And the other thing is that it's not just the taxpayer money, is that Puerto Rico has received around $7 billion in the past couple of years to fix schools is specifically for education. And where is that money going? Mm. It's going to their pocket because they are not using it. They are stealing that money. They are not using it to fix anything which is horrible. It's, they're just digging their own grave. It's very sad. And the sixth reason as to why you should not move to Puerto Rico is if you like things to be done fast and furious, you will not receive that in Puerto Rico at all. When we moved to Puerto Rico, I obviously needed to change all my legal documentations, like my ID and such. So we had to book an appointment to go to the DMV or the MDV and it literally took forever. It was like the worst experience of my life. I was just saying how ridiculous it is because Puerto Rico's a territory of the US and you would assume that things have been modernized and technology has been implemented, but no way, Jose. You literally will be introduced by paper writing documentations. Literally, that's it. They don't do things on the computer. You can't do things online. There is nothing that's being done efficiently. So you will stay at the DMV trying to get your ID, your driver's license the whole day. You plan a picnic. You're going to be there from the time they open to the time they close because I just don't understand why, but that's it. The other thing with that is that you have to plan to be there the whole day. The sad part about it is that you can bring all the paperwork that they told you to bring or that you saw in the website that you need to bring. And at the moment that you are already with the person that is taking care of you, they tell you that you are actually missing two papers or two documents or whatever. And you need to book another appointment for a different day. And that appointment is going to be in a month or two months from now. It is horrible. Just make sure that you have every single thing. If you have to call 20 times, because that's the other thing, you can call and call. They never answer. <laughs> when they answer, they don't have the answers for your questions. <laughs> it, is, it is frustrating. I know there is a lot of countries that are like that. It's not just Puerto Rico. But if you come from a developed place like United States, Puerto Rico is going to be very frustrating for you. You're going to be very, very annoyed every single time that you have to do any process that has to do with legal documents. It can be on a government um, establishment or it can be in a private one too. It doesn't matter. It will take you a very long time, the whole day maybe, and maybe more than one day. And one tip that we can give you regarding this is have multiple copies of your legal documentation forms. All the paperwork, your birth certificates, anything and everything have at least five minimum because they only receive copies and it needs to be paper for. And for reason number seven, we have humidity. Que calor! <laughs> Isn't that right? Did I say that right? Yeah, you said it right. <laughs> What's wrong? I don't know. This is what's awkward. Eh, I don't know. Well, whatever. <laughs> but humidity, the humidity in Puerto Rico is extremely high. We, I mean, I like humidity. I don't like sweating. That's, that's very, especially if you're going out to a nice place or whatever, it's very uncomfortable. To dress very nicely is very uncomfortable. With the humidity thing, almost every single home in Puerto Rico doesn't have AC. It has to be a very modern home, very expensive home or something that will come with AC. It will not be centralized AC, it will be console in every room or something. But every time you shower, you come out of the shower and you start sweating. You, you shower with cold water, 
and you start dressing up and you start sweating while you're dressing up. It's very humid, extremely humid. If you are very fancy about blow drying your hair and everything, it will mess that up really quickly. It will damage a lot of things in your house. The humidity will create mold everywhere. And with the humidity, I was surprised at how it was because it's not as hot in Puerto Rico like, say, Arizona. I prefer the heat in Puerto Rico over Arizona any day. But because of the humidity and our family's homes, they did not have centralized AC or AC in every room. So the doors are all open. So during the summertime, if you are living in a home or if you bought a Puerto Rican built home that doesn't have a modern design to it, just be prepared and do your due diligence with what you need to invest in to make your home comfortable and suitable for you and your family. Because definitely coming from the States or where there is centralized AC, it is an extreme adjustment. And with the humidity and open doors comes mosquitoes. So just keep that in mind because if you're prone to getting mosquitoes and you are not used to the heat like that, it can be very icky. The eighth reason as to why you should not move to Puerto Rico is because of the natural disasters. Not only are there hurricanes during hurricane season, but there are also frequent earthquakes happening more and more every single year. So when you are looking to move to Puerto Rico, you should look into areas that are not sea level, that may have some elevation to it so that your home doesn't get flooded during hurricane season because it definitely can get flooded in some areas as you have probably seen in the news. And if it's not in an area that may get flooded because it has a slightly higher elevation, your street may be flooded for a few days, but obviously your home is at risk. So just know that you do have to make preparations for your home because of natural disasters. For example, having a generator in the back of your home for the entire home or just for preparing food. Little things like that. They're kind of major, not little things. Yeah, with the natural disaster, the, the biggest problem with Puerto Rico and the natural disasters is that every time there is a hurricane or there is um, earthquakes or whatever, it is a lot more difficult for the island just because of the fact that it's an island to actually be restored in many ways. Not only because the government in Puerto Rico is mega extra, extra, mega extra <laughs> slow and they don't do anything. Also, the help from the United States takes a lot longer to arrive to Puerto Rico because of the difficulties that may be the airport is messed up or whatever reason so it's harder for the help from the united states to arrive to puerto rico and be able to help the people the south of puerto rico has been very active with earthquakes since 2019. Mm -hmm. the south and southwest yeah it's been very active almost every year especially around christmas there is always movement in that area there is always earthquakes there is a lot of people moving out from those areas, moving towards north or towards east because the south part of Puerto Rico has been very damaged because of this earthquake. And if you do pursue your move to Puerto Rico, just know you should have a little storage of food prepared for whenever things get tough. Reason number nine in our list is the utilities. The electricity system, the water system in Puerto Rico, is the it will sound like I'm just repeating the same thing but it's the worst <laughs> that I experienced in my life the electricity company before was part of the government right the government owned that company but they saw that now right and now it's private now it's private and oh, everyone thought that oh whenever it gets private privatized ooh, it will be the great thing everyone will have electricity every single day since they sold it, it's a hundred times worse. <laughs> Before, if there was a natural disaster, there will be problems with electricity for months. But now, even if there is, it can be completely sunny and nice, <laughs> and the light will be like the electricity will just go out. The company that owns the electricity company now is called Luma, 
And I think they are under investigation and everything because they are such a horrible company because of maybe some corruption happening there. And since they got in there, everything started going backwards instead of progressing. The electricity is bad. The water system is bad. I remember one time we had a farm in Puerto Rico when we were over there. And I remember one time I was moving our chickens from one area to another. Nicole was working on the water. She was washing the, the little waterer. And at one moment I was walking and I started passing by Nicole and I look at her and she was with the hose looking down and crying, but crying like she lost someone. And she's there crying and I look at her and I was like, baby, what, what happened? Why, why are you crying? And she was like, the water, the water. And when I look at the hose, it was just throwing like little dots, little... <laughs> The, the host was just throwing little drops of water. True story. So, I kid you not. I was crying for a long time because I was just saying and thinking to myself, like, I was thinking of scenarios that we didn't even have. Like, I was like, imagine if we had kids. How would they shower? How would we feed them? What if our chickens, they don't all, like, they don't get their water. They will all just die. Like, I was just going overboard because of how ridiculous it was and it honestly happened a few times in puerto rico when i was brushing my teeth and then the water stopped and i was just like oh my gosh yeah, i need it, a water bottle yeah it will always happen in the in the in the worst timing that like you will be showering you will be full of soap everywhere and the water will just stop coming out like just like that. So every time that you're going to do something, especially if you have animals, make sure that you have backup. Yes. And with the water system, there's obviously systems here in the States that you can possibly contract to do your home in Puerto Rico for solar panels and for generators and then for also the water system. So because it rains a lot in Puerto Rico, you can definitely utilize the rainwater, have that purified and cleaned and that runs for your entire home. It is a costly investment, but if you do plan to live in Puerto Rico comfortably without experiencing any of these interruptions, then do that. If not, don't move there. The 10th reason as to why you should not move to Puerto Rico is because there is no nightlife. Like obviously in San Juan, that's a tourist spot. And so you will have little bars here and there that are by the marina. Other than that, it isn't like some place where you would go, hey, let's go to the club because everyone's there and it's completely safe. No, just go to the bar, grab your drinks or go to the beach with your resort that you paid for but there's nothing else more to it and with that comes very limited open spots in the evening. There are not many restaurants that are open 24 7 or late at night so you have to get your food. If you're drinking there's no midnight tacos for you. <laughs> you have to make that yourself. Well, there are some food trucks that you can actually go and you can have a delicious, a delicious tripleta. Oh my God, what a good meal to have. It doesn't matter at what time, if it's midnight, morning, afternoon, evening. Wow, okay. Tripleta is the thing. That's my thing that's your nightlife right there go get a tripleta you know but um <laughs> with the nightlife talking about it the there are clubs not many there are clubs maybe san juan maybe Caguas, which is on the east side of puerto rico maya west but if you are planning to live outside of the metropolitan area and it's a little bit more away from the chaos you will need to take a very nice drive to go to the club, <laughs> which is a good thing because I don't recommend anyone to go to the club anyways. So it's a good thing if you live far away and you have to drive an hour to get there, you probably won't even go. <laughs> Another thing with the clubs, I work at a club before, before I gave my life to Christ. I was a bouncer at a club. You guys have no idea how dangerous are the clubs in Puerto Rico. I saw many people going there, having a nice time, thinking that they are in a safe place because there are bouncers everywhere. 
Now, there were bouncers everywhere because they're very dangerous people that go there. Make sure that if you are going to one, make sure you, if you have to spend a little more money to go to a very nice one, then do that. But just don't go to any club that you can see anywhere because you are risking your life big time. We're going to give you guys a bonus one. Actually, we're going to give you two bonuses. Two bonuses? One okay. of them is language. You need to learn Spanish or you just need to surround yourself with people that just speak English. Because although Puerto Rico is a, is a United States territory, a lot of people don't speak English. Many people don't speak English, especially mm -hmm. the older generation. Very, very minimal amount of them speak English. The language is one of the reasons why I would say to not move to Puerto Rico, especially if you are this type of person that likes to be out and talking to people, very social person that likes to, you know, get in communication with the community. If you are that type of person, just make sure you at least you know the basics on Spanish. Yeah, like, hola, como esta? Buenos dias, buenas noches, adios. Mi nombre es... You will do fine. I did fine. If that's the only thing that you know, you're going to be very messed up. <laughs> if that's the only thing that you know, you better not be a social person because you won't be able to have a communication with anyone because that's exactly what she talked with my mom. Every time that she talked to my mom, it's hola, como estas, buenos dias, bye bye. Well, you do have the translator, there's translator app, so you utilize that. And then the other bonus that we are talking about why you should not move to Puerto Rico is the freaking COVID vaccine. Mm, so they are very high on um, pharmaceuticals. They're not just, they are ridiculous about the freaking vaccine. To go to eat to a restaurant, to go anywhere. They're still using masks in Puerto Rico. In places that you are needing to go, you're still having to wear a freaking mask. I can't even believe it. Like I anywhere mean, else, you can just... Is, what is that? China? Like, what are we talking about? There's a lot of places. Obviously, yes. So, Puerto Rico, they do have their own system and culture in place. They are a part of the U.S., but they definitely do things a different way. And they are very fearful, despite not many people living on the island and having cleaner air <laughs> but it's very strange as to how they approach things just because we are not for those things so if you do advocate for that then of course then that's great for your peace of mind but it is quite limited if you aren't vaccinated and if you don't like wearing masks because and even they... if you're vaccinated it's still like we don't go to doctors, we don't go to hospitals, we don't go to any of that. But my family in Puerto Rico, they do. My mom is vaccinated. My dad is vaccinated. But for them to go to an appointment, like to the dentist, they still have to get a negative test. Yeah, that's like just how it is with places that are everywhere. Right they need, everywhere they go, they need to take a test. They need to be negative and they need to bring that and it has to be within two days or whatever. It's yeah. just stupid. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. I know. And life, coming... life in Puerto Rico is already complicated and they, the government over there want to make it even worse. Well, that's it for this video. We're going to be sharing with you guys 10 reasons why you should move to Puerto Rico and why we might move to Puerto Rico. And why we also left Puerto Rico. Yeah, we'll be gonna... sharing you everything. We'll cover everything down. And if you are thinking about moving to Puerto Rico, tune in. Thank you so much and God bless you.